Welcome to another exciting episode of The Energy That Surrounds Us. I'm your host, Michael, and I am joined today on this special night because we had originally scheduled earlier and life happened, so we had to reschedule. And so we are finally able to make this episode happen, and I'm so excited to be bringing not just one, but two onto the show and the even more cool factor is they have just formed a new team so we'll get to hear all about that and what went into that happening so i am going to hand over to each of them to introduce themselves and give a little bit of their background so I'm going to go ahead and say, Jen, take it away. Oh, gosh. I was hoping <laughs> you wouldn't say me first. <laughs> um, um, yep. Yeah, um, my name's Jen. Hello. Um, Rachel and I started Sinister Sisters, you know, oh, my gosh, about a month ago, <laughs> month ago now at this point. And um, yeah. I'm definitely newer to the whole, you know, paranormal community, but you know, my entire life, I've always been interested in anything spooky, ghostly, paranormal, witchy. Um, and yeah, um, you know, through this, through meeting Rachel, you know, we just had so much in common and we immediately clicked and became best friends and, you know, just started started this journey together just kind of really naturally just grew into what it is so yeah <laughs> and <laughs> i have to say in reading bios and like putting them together for you all in the descriptions i loved jen's when she writes I was born in October, so naturally. Oh, and, that, well, and, and I was born the day before Halloween, October 30th. <laughs> so growing up, Halloween was always a really big deal in our household. We, you know, made a big shebang of it every year. And I mean, I just, it's just been something I've been in love with my entire life. So, yeah, yeah of course. A so Halloween she really baby. means it when she spooky. says, if it's spooky, count me in. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. We were talking about that backstage before we came on. And mm -hmm. now we're going to hand it over to Rachel. Yeah. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> I wish you would have gone first. <laughs> well, I'm Rachel. And... Um, I'm here in Nashville now, but originally I'm from the San Francisco Bay Area. Um, like Jen, I've been interested in uh, pretty much all things paranormal. And I'm not just talking about like ghosts, but I love aliens mm -hmm. um, and uh, cryptids. And so I'm really fascinated by all of it. Um, but I think like, like spirits took a, forefront um early on in my life and i think that's why i have like an extra like curiosity towards it um because i had like experience when i was uh 10 years old and and seeing my grandfather and then i also had an experience at a uh at a childhood friend's house um as a teenager um and so those really shaped like i think my interest in in all things paranormal because I was, had so many questions because of it. And, um, you know, I'm always looking to see if I can find the answers. So. Right. 
And the unique thing about Rachel was her show was originally supposed to go right after her team at the time was on the show. And so it was like, she was like, are you sure you want to have me on? Uh, Because I'm not the team. And I was like, you're a part. You have your own thing. And you being co-owner of a bar, that's pretty cool. Up and coming, yeah. We're working on uh, trying to make a brewery happen uh, here in Nashville. So we've been at that since since 2020, kind of home brewing and uh, doing all the uh, beer festivals. We can get our name out there and and uh, try and make it happen. Yeah. So you're the person to ask this. Then, what is the difference between home brewing and craft? I mean, craft is home brewing. It just depends on the scale of it. So, okay. yeah. So home brewing, you're actually physically doing all your brewing process at home. Um, and, you know, uh, the other is at like a facility and that's a commercial. So there's either home brewing or commercial brewing. Um, so both make craft beer. I mean, there. if you're going to say like, you know, Bud Light and, you know, Coors, and that's not really craft beer. That's, that's just traditional beer. Um, but craft beer is always like, it, it, there's a twist on all those classic uh, styles. So like we just, uh, I just posted to, to our page, like what um, my brother-in-law, so it's my husband and his brother, they do the brewing and he was brewing a, he brewed for um, upcoming festival here in Nashville in uh, September. Um, he brewed a atomic uh, habanero pumpkin ale. So yeah, it's <laughs> got like all of the, all the like spice of like a pumpkin pie, but it's going to be, have some heat to it. So that sounds interesting actually. Yeah. I had a sip of it before I came up and I was like, Whoo, <laughs> cause I'm not, I'm not like for me, the less spice, the better. Like I'm just like, I can't take it, but refreshing. And that raises an interesting question because when you eat hot food, like milk is what you use to calm the mouth down. So if you're drinking heat, you're not going to drink milk after beer because that won't mix well. So how do you get the heat out of your mouth? You don't know. <laughs> That's why I think like here in Nashville, because everybody's all about like spice. They want like, we did a beer um, last year that was, um, it was a, it was a Mexican lager with jalapeno, except for we took out the heat away from it. So we had the flavor of the, of the jalapeno but it didn't have any heat behind it because my husband went in there and took out all the seeds <laughs> and he ended up like burning his hand. <laughs> yeah. You, you got to wear the gloves. He uh, did. He did wear gloves, but it soaked through. Ooh, really? He was cutting so much. Yeah. It soaked through and then he couldn't get like the, it was like his hands were burning for hours. Um, but there was zero heat to the beer, but then, so he had it and people liked it, but they were like, we wanted the heat. <laughs> We're in Nashville, Nashville hot chicken. Like we like the heat. And so we're like, okay, so this year we did, we did the Mexican lager again with jalapeno with the spice. And now we're going to do for the fall, the pumpkin with the habanero. So it'll be a little bit hotter. You know, I can't help but thinking just by the name of it gone, you know, a paranormal brew, the ghost pepper brew. Yeah, like uh, our brewery is named Dark Shadow. So um, a lot of our beers, like we have some ones that we consider, like when we roll out to actually have a brewery, um, that we have some flagship beers and um, we have been naming them like, you know, kind of spooky names to them. Um, and our logo definitely looks like uh, it's kind of Jack the Ripper-esque. It's, it's, it's a shadow figure you can't tell if the shadow is looking at you or if it's looking away from you 
So it's kind of just standing there in this kind of like 18th century sort of top hat cape. And all you see is this dark shadow of a, of something and it's in the fog and it's got like the, the street light during the 1800s. So that's yeah, really cool. I like it a lot. Yeah. We came yeah. up with it after visiting uh, New Orleans and taking some of the ghost tours down there. Um, oh, yeah. That's how we ended up kind of coming up with the name and the logo and everything. And I bet your guys' house is the party house. <laughs> Everybody it's definitely the spooky house. <laughs> uh, uh, it's year-round spooky. <laughs> but yeah, yeah. I mean, we give away free beer, so you know. <laughs> uh, you probably didn't want to say that live on the air. <laughs> I didn't put my address out, so I, you know. <laughs> I'll just say it if you get if people figure this out and start lining up. That was well, that's not what we my want. doing. <laughs> Did you say woohoo? <laughs> <laughs> yep. <laughs> that's what so, we want. We want people to know about us. <laughs> no, yeah, no, that's a great. And then that's the only way you're going to grow is actually by people liking it and spreading the word. And so that's yep. actually that's really do all smart. The festivals and, and stuff around the area that we can. So usually about sometimes 10 to 12 per year. I was just saying Nashville is like almost every week is a festival. So you're in like the perfect spot. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. During from like late spring to late fall is usually, is usually the go time for us. And it's also the go time for like paranormal investigations. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it is. Because <And laughs> the weather's the best. So you guys, yeah. you're not going to want to investigate in the winter. No. Yeah. So not to put you on the spot, Jen, but I'm going to you first for this because you being new, mm -hmm. I feel like your perspective and answer on this will be more interesting. Okay. So being the enthusiast you were growing up, Mm -hmm. What was the place that made you sit there and go, man, I wish I could do that and go to places like that? You know, it's funny. I, I never even knew that that was an option um, until I met Rachel. Um, I always thought it was something that like, if you wanted to be an investigator, like you had to have your own TV show. Like, I didn't know it was something that you could do. You know what I mean? Like, as a, as a hobby, you know, um, on your own or in teams, like I had no, no idea, no idea. Yeah. So I'm, I'm laughing, Jen, because that's my exact story. Is yeah. I like, got pegged and somebody goes, do you want to join our team? And I'm like, you mean this is real? Yeah. I had no clue. And then, you know, at the time Rachel was a part of a different group and, um, she invited me along for an investigation and, I was so excited. You know, I mean, like, I just, you know, I was like, of course. And then, you know, it just kind of like segued into learning more about the community and how it really works. And that this is like a much, much bigger deal than what I ever in my mind would have thought it could be. So I thought you had to be, you know, on ghost adventures or ghost hunters or something, you know what I mean? In order to be in, do investigations, I had no clue, no clue. So well, you had a great inspirer. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. I thought it was the coolest thing when she told me that she was part of a group. I was like, wow. Brooklyn, Brooklyn. I know. I was like, that's so freaking cool. Like, I didn't even know that was a thing. And I just wanted so much to learn more about it and, and get involved. And, you know, like I said, because I just thought, hey, I would only be able to experience it watching Zach Baggins. So, you know. <laughs> So where yeah. was your first investigation at? The Thomas House. Mm -hmm. Yeah, December. Yeah, the Thomas House in Red Boiling Springs. So Tennessee. Tennessee. <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> yep. Well, that was I really like how Rachel's sitting there calling it's Tennessee. You gotta say Tennessee. Yeah, Tennessee <laughs> Thomas House, Red Boiling Springs, Tennessee. Yes. Um. <laughs> And it was interesting, you know, it was, I didn't know what to expect. Um, 
that was a chaotic night though. Cause that's also the same day that like we had a bunch of tornadoes touch down, you know, like where we live, I live in Springfield, Tennessee. And, um, you know, it was just, I, I swear I, we drove scary. through a tornado. I, there's no doubt in my mind. Like we drove through a tornado, like on our way to, to red boiling Springs. I know there's just <laughs> no way we didn't. Um, but we made it. <laughs> um, in one piece. Thank you. In one piece. Yeah. yeah. And then we got there and they had everybody on the lower level of the, of the hotel because there was an active tornado warning going on. So you know, <laughs> and yet the rest of us were like, "Yes, it's going to bring out the activity." <laughs> yeah, everybody was everybody was really excited about you know the energy and everything that the storms were creating, and I had I had no idea what they were talking about. So we were like, "Here, yeah. try these dowsing rods." <laughs> yeah. Yep. See, and and then, Rachel, I love you brought that up because that is one of the funniest things about paranormal investigators is. When somebody says, oh, my God, there's this major weather event going on, our answer is hook up the trailer, put the gear in, let's get going before it passes by. <laughs> We're like, we run into it instead of away from, away it. from it. Right. <laughs> yep. That's kind of the exciting part of it, right? Because it just, like, kicks up the atmosphere, changes everything, and it brings... Yeah some different ramps energy and so yep it ramps it up exactly that's what we're looking for yeah uh, i don't have to ask but i'm going to was there a lot of paranormal activity that night for you um kind of in between right yeah kind of in between <laughs> i mean i felt like we got a lot of activity with the dousing rods um but after that, not, not, none that I'm like, oh my gosh, like this happened. Um, that didn't happen until uh, the Old Stone Jail <laughs> investigation. Yeah. Um, uh, I was going to say, if it hasn't happened, just oh, hold on. It's coming. It happened. It happened. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, not, not that particular night. At that particular night. So, but yeah. like I said, it was still a really good experience. And, you know, yeah. it was a nice introduction into that so well and that was the perfect segue because my second part of my question to you was going to be is where has been your most memorable location since and yes now Definitely. we found out it's the stone place <laughs> yes yeah the old stone jail in um and the museum in franklin kentucky right yeah that, the historical yeah. society the historical yeah. society yeah um, that was where I can truly say I had my first like legitimate paranormal experience. And, um, I knew I wasn't losing my mind because there were other people that experienced what I experienced with me, without me even having to say anything. Um, and, uh, we're going back in a couple in September, no, in yeah, uh, September. Yeah, in yeah. September. Yeah, we're going back in September and it'll be my second time going back there. And I'm really excited because I want to see, you know, if I have any similar experiences or how I feel and, you know, react differently now having a little bit more experience under my belt, kind of knowing what to expect and how to do things as opposed to being there, you know, the first time around. So. Right. Yeah. And the, ne the question I have for you next, and I, I'll probably ask it of you too, Rachel, is being the enthusiast, going on the investigation, and now being more experienced, what was your first thoughts of all the just what seemed like downtime that people don't understand that it's actually a part of investigating like three hours in yeah. a room by yourself, talking to the air? <laughs> um, I guess because I I kind of maybe had a different expectation going into it. I know that, like, things that you see on TV are really made for TV. So I just really went in with an open mind and didn't set any type of expectation. Um, and the downtime really didn't bother me because I, I still feel like it was um, – it didn't seem like downtime. Like every time we go on an investigation, even if we don't get any activity for a couple of hours, I still feel like the night just flies by. Um, just between, you know, 
just walking around the property, do, trying out different equipment, doing different things. I mean, I've never left disappointed. If there, if if we went on an investigation, and there wasn't a lot, a lot of activity. I I I guess I just I, I never left disappointed because I just I I never I didn't go in there with the expectation of oh my gosh I'm gonna see a a chair fly across the room. You know, I mean, like, I'm going to hear doors slamming shut all around me all night long. Like, I just knew that wasn't how it really was. I mean, how how mm -hmm. could it be? Um, right. So but I, just to clarify, when I meant downtime, I oh, meant like when you're doing the EVP sessions and there's a lot of oh, quiet time just sitting there and going, am I getting a response? And then the next question. Yeah. I'm hoping... Oh. No, I mean, it just doesn't bother me. I mean, um, um, yeah, like it was awkward know. for me at first because I was like, yeah. God, I'm so glad there's no camera on me right now because this so could get me locked up <laughs> with the straight jacket because I'm just sitting here having conversation with the air. <laughs> I don't know. I think maybe downtime like that doesn't bother me because we interact with people all day long. <laughs> oh yeah, you're so like I enjoy this. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I'm 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 good with quiet. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Just we're good. Doesn't bother me not one bit. So yeah, you know it's actually I'm good. No opinion, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> so Rachel, do you feel like your experience as a kid? is what kind of molded you into the investigator you are or do you think that just opened the door and stuff that happened later really made you who you are today i would say it has to be both um i think that it definitely my experiences as a kid definitely opened the door to to really having that interest in like the paranormal but i think you know, my experience of actually investigating have have that evolution has sort of made me the investigator I am today. Because yeah. I think I've had like just so many kind of like, even though if they were just small moments, there's been so many in in even just the past year. And I think that I think we've touched on it before, but um, you know, I think it it has has to do a lot with the company that we that we choose to be with when we investigate. Um, I think that we've had like amazing energy mm -hmm. um, and that has sort of like, I think lent itself to bring out maybe more spiritual activity um, that we've been able to like document. Maybe there was sort of a, like a sort of progressive ramping up um, you know, and we, I think Jen and I have talked at length about, yeah. about this, that we really feel like it's definitely who we are with. There was, Absolutely. there's been definite connection with those people. And that seems to like, br maybe bring the interest of the spirits. Mm -hmm. Because so, they see it jive so well. Yeah. Right. And I have a curious question for you, Rachel, because mm -hmm. You're a paranormal investigator who has kind of turned around and decided to put on the hat of mentor. So what what made you decide, you know, hey, you know, maybe it's time to mentor another investigator and going, okay, Jen, you're it. <laughs> I'm going to mentor you. Let's go. <laughs> I don't think it even happened like that. I don't even think I, I even thought that way. We are just like Jen and I are coworkers during mm -hmm. our Monday through Friday, nine to five jobs. Um, and so it, I think that because of us having like that common interest in like all things like spooky and, and paranormal, we would, it was just like a natural evolution of our conversations together. And it was just like, as, as, she came on to investigations with us and, um, and the different teams that we've been with. It, it was just like, it was such a natural evolution that we were like, you know, just at, at lunchtime going like, that's a, like, we could do this. Let's do this. Like, 
Mm-hmm. And, you yeah. know, and she was like, I'm all in. Like, all in. <laughs> sign me up. Because <laughs> I had a little bit of hesitation. I mean, you probably know this, Michael, is like, you know, being a paranormal investigator is not cheap. And no. like the equipment is very expensive. And so for it to be, you know, something that we love to do, investigated, like this is what we do for us, for our, like it's our passion. It's, mm-hmm. it's like, you know, our hobby, it's like our drive, what we, what we, like gives us joy. Um, yeah. But it's not, it's not a cheap uh, hobby to have. And, and um, so, you know, that was my concern about like starting a team and, you know, Jen was always just like, you know, I'm in it with you and whatever you need, we'll, we'll figure it we'll out. Figure we'll, it out. We'll, we'll share, the, we'll share the, the expenses together. Like it won't just be you, you know? So it was always like, you know, it's amazing that, you know, I had her, so. Right, and one thing I think that's interesting in the dynamics is you guys just starting your team fairly recently what can you kind of walk through what for you guys you were like okay you know we're gonna create this team so what was going through your minds and what all did you guys go through to say okay we can do this teamwork we can do this as a team because i know there are so many people out there who are like I want to investigate, but there's nobody here and I don't know how to form a team and all of that. So here you are just coming off of that. So any insights you can share? Yeah, You kind of hit the nail on the head um, (laughs) with your statement. So like me coming into the community, you know, not knowing where to begin, not knowing that there were teams, not knowing you know, that there's this whole entire community, you know, Rachel and I, once again, you know, lunch conversations, (laughs) how cool would it be to start a group presenting the opportunity to people who are interested in this, giving them the option to, to join on investigations, you know, letting, you know, basically making, making this more well known to people who share an interest and a passion in this, that making it easier um, for, for people to be able to participate in investigations and um, just like making it more well known, I guess. I don't know. What am I looking for, Rachel? Like just kind of giving us accessibility to the, who just don't know where to begin. Where to begin. Like, how do I, how do I start? How do I get involved? How do I join yeah. a team? And like, if I want, even want to, like, what is it right. like to investigate? Like, that's what we, that's been like our goal and our mission in like creating Sinister Sisters was that the whole thing was that we wanted to kind of give that education to people mm-hmm. who are just quote normal, you know, like yeah. people who have an interest in the paranormal, but like have no idea like where, where to, to start. Yeah, this is we want to give that that opening to them and yeah. like and give them that ability to like say this is what we do as investigators. This is how we investigate. This is the equipment we use. This is mm-hmm. the terms we use. It is like it's like mentoring them, um, kind of for their next step in their journey. Yeah. Um, And through that, you know, we formed our own group to be able to do that, to be able to provide that opportunity with open arms, you know, truly, you know, welcoming people in um, that want to learn and want to participate and, you know, want to go forward with this hobby or this passion that they might have. Um, Because I feel like I don't, me personally, like I said, I would have had no idea. I had no idea. And I'm going to be 42 this year, 42 years old. And I'm just now learning that there's a paranormal community out there. You know, you're starting earlier than I did. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Young starting. (laughs) (laughs) But I'm saying it's something that I've had an interest in my entire life, you know, and just now to be able to really do something about that interest and that passion, you know, I don't want that to be a closed door to other people, you know, that would like to pursue 
you know, doing something like this. I want, you know, I want it to be easily accessible for them and, you know, give them the opportunity and the tools that they want and need to, to go forward. So. And I have to say in full transparency, we were talking about shows um, before we came on. And one thing I will say kind of to piggyback on what you're saying, Jen, is the benefit of the shows Mm-hmm. most of the shows are not young people like destination mm-hmm. fear. I mentioned them. Yeah, they're young. So they're going to be more active and able to do more of those kind of like seven story buildings, you know, with just a staircase. They'll be like, no problem. Mm-hmm. But the rest of us that are, you know, not in our twenties, <laughs> We, uh, that. <laughs> you know, yeah. we're like, you know, we can go, well, look at Ghost Adventures or look at Ghost Hunters or Ghost Hunters International. They were all older people mm-hmm. going and investigating. So it's not a young person's career. It's mm-hmm. any age can do it. Right. Mm-hmm. Right. Absolutely. Absolutely. I'll be rolling in there with my ankle brace on, but I'll be there, yeah. you know. <laughs> <laughs> wow, this conversation like just said, a really I think weird I, turn. Yeah, I think I posted like to one of my uh it's in one of the social media it says something about like I'll be I'll be my retirement plan is ghost hunting. Ghost hunting. You, know? <laughs> yep. you know, and I was like, I'll be in my wheelchair and you know, absolutely like, yeah. we'll look up some <laughs> NOS to that thing and we'll send you on your way. And I so. said, wouldn't we be like the coolest like your yep. citizens. <laughs> yep. Yep. <laughs> yeah, I can just see it now. Going to be on your epitaph on your stone is you better not be ignoring me on this side anymore. <laughs> <laughs> nope. But yeah, so yeah. that's kind of how this, how, how the group formed, you know, I mean, it just, once again, just kind of naturally, naturally mm-hmm. grew into what it is. So and Rachel, this this question is kind of guided towards you because you have the history with the other teams. And I'm curious with starting a new team, when you go to locations and you're like, hey, can we investigate here? And I know a lot of people are nervous about having teams coming in. Do you ever go, well, I was a part of this team who came here and they're like, Oh, okay. Yeah. We'll, we'll green light you, you know, and you get access to locations. Yeah. I mean, I think the places where we have upcoming investigations are definitely um, locations because of the connections that I formed being a part of the other group. Um, I got to know like the owners of the buildings. And so it was easy to reach out to them and say, Hey, look, I I started my own team and we want to do an investigation. You know, what can we do to make that happen? And like everyone that I've approached has been like, wonderful, you know, (laughs) like come aboard. (laughs) We'll be happy to have you. So, you know, I, I think that, and I don't know if that's, like that for their states and other locations um like um but i haven't had like experience any difficulty so far here in tennessee so yeah everybody's been super super nice super welcoming yeah super, super welcoming excited to have us here. i mean all the it's been really good experiences everywhere ev- everywhere we've gone so far yeah so, the locations are yeah. great yeah well i'm glad to hear that because yeah, and Jen, you got a bonus because a lot of people don't have somebody that can get you access to a lot of yes. these locations no, this, up front. Yeah, <laughs> this would not be possible without Rachel. Absolutely. And I know that. I know that. Very and I know Rachel's there. sitting there saying it. it's not just me. You're helping too. So <laughs> Absolutely. I know that's there. <laughs> I couldn't do this without her. Yeah. <laughs> Wouldn't want to either. <laughs> yeah, me neither. So what is, I know we've kind of hit on, so what is the overall goal and how many team members do you want to have? 
um, Sinister Sisters? I think right now, I mean, since we're new, I think we, we intend to keep it small, mm -hmm. um, you know, and also, you know, just knowing that as a team grows, there can be more personality conflicts amongst team members. And I think, you know, Jen and I work really well together that, you know, right now we're not looking to like expand or grow in any way. Um, you know, that could evolve as things go down the road. So yeah. we're, we're obviously keeping a very open mind about that, but if the right person comes along and of course, you know, we're like, yeah, it, the chemistry is there and we fit mm -hmm. really well, then, you know, that might happen. But right now we're just, you know, focusing on us and mm -hmm. just trying to get this, you know, ball rolling. Yeah. All right. And I know inevitably someone's going to ask this because you guys are named Sinister Sisters. And some guys may be like, I would love to join them and go. Is that going to ever be an option or... <laughs> Yeah, I mean, yeah, I, I mean, we wouldn't we are, we wouldn't discourage that at all. No, no. Okay, I guess maybe I just... we have to be the sisters. <laughs> <laughs> I just, I just I ask because I know there are some teams that are like, yeah, we want to be all female or all no. male, and so yeah. no. And we're there's not nothing gonna, wrong. We're with not that. gonna. Yeah, we're, no. we're just we're keeping an open mind. It has to be yeah. the the right person, the right fit. And we're not going to say that it has to be a certain gender yeah. um, to be a part. It just has to be the right energy and chemistry mm -hmm. with us, at, you know, to, to fit on the team. So, yeah. Right. So what locations are you guys sitting there saying, man, I totally want to go there. Oh my God. And, <laughs> there's so many. There's so I've many. got a I've got a bucket list. Yeah, we have started a bucket list. So I've got like the big locations that I would of course go to. Like at uh, like it's gonna happen early 2025. Is gonna is gonna be Waverly Hills. Yep. Um, I want to go Trans Allegheny. Um, of course I want to go because I'm like such a, a a New Orleans fan. Um. I'd love to do some investigating down there. I've been talking with another team who just like you come down, we'll we'll bring you, we'll bring you in and get into some locations. But it's not New Orleans, but it's relatively close. Is Myrtle's Plantation? Been there. I would love to go there. Um, go. I want to go back to Savannah and Salem and Charleston. Yeah. Um, so many locations I've been to, done like the ghost tours, but I actually want to get inside some of those buildings and investigate. So, yeah. Very cool. And so Jen, I got to ask, has there ever been a location that you were like, Hey, Rachel, you know, check this place out. What do you think of this? And Rachel's like, I've been there. Um, not well you know what because i really don't know what locations are really <laughs> available to be investigated like i'm still learning what a po what the possibility is and, and what's not so you know rachel will kind of bring up places that you know she'd like to go and i'll look into it i'll be like heck yeah you know that sounds cool let's do it you know but definitely waverly waverly was one that i would love to go to you know that well what, I didn't even know that that was a possibility until Rachel told me. Like I said, I just thought that these were, those were got to be, you know, on a TV show to do it. So, yeah. Yeah, I'm, there still, are. <laughs> yeah, I'm still learning. I'm still, I'm learning a lot, you know. Um, but I mean, Rachel knows I am the easiest person to please. I'm, I'm along the ride for anything, anything and everything. Anywhere she wants to go, I'll, I'll be there. Mm -hmm. No qualms. So I, I'm just going to say this one time. Don't go the route of an errand. Don't go the what? Route of an errand. <laughs> an errand. Errand from like, yeah. From, uh, yeah don't. 
<laughs> don't be the gonna just, like and send don't... her in a solo investigation by oh, herself. No. Oh no! Don't, don't let people stir the pot. Down like, in the oh, hole. Jen, yeah. go sit in there for you know. Oh heck hours. no! Like, no, 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 no! I would never do that nope. to someone. No, no, nope. and that's actually one of our rules. Like nobody's allowed to go anywhere on their own. Like nope, not happening. Not happening. That's a safety issue. Yeah. Like I feel like, like no. It is, and I, I kind of have to put my head down because I've been known to disappear. Oh, <laughs> no. Nope. Uh, I, I'm honest about it, but I don't disappear for long. <laughs> <laughs> Probably nobody even realizes I'm missing half the time. <laughs> <laughs> Like I said, I wouldn't put her down in the hole or anything like a brushy. No. <laughs> mm -mm. Not happening. Body shoot it. Way nope. Waverly. <laughs> you know, talking about Waverly, if memory serves right, Waverly is the like multi-huge megaplex building. So I, I'm almost curious, you know, if you go there, are you going to take other teams with you? Or are you guys like, nope, we want the whole building to ourselves? Oh, no. heck no. no. We plan no. to go with, with you know, several people. I think yeah. uh, at, at overnight investigation, my understanding, Waverly, you can have up to 10 people, um, that investigation. So we'll probably lean on <laughs> having I mean, somewhere close to that. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, Waverly is one of those places that I'm like, I could actually consider going 50 people could be capacity there because yeah. it's so huge. It's so right. And you get zero contamination, probably. Mm -hmm. Right. Yep. Because you could have like people down on the, you could have a team in the body shoot. You can have a team like up on the, the top Absolutely. floor. You can have a team like <laughs> in the middle. <laughs> Yep. Uh, on the, the middle, left like, side versus the yeah, right side. Yeah. Exactly. And you still wouldn't, I forget how long it is, but it's like, it's insane how it big is. it is. Like, yeah. It's like, it looks bigger than the largest hotel, probably. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. And there's because tunnels the under it. Yep. So, that's that, that body shoot. I think the tunnel leads to the body shoot that, mm -hmm. yeah. Because they didn't want people seeing how many. People Body. were dying. Yeah. yeah. How many people right. were dying of tuberculosis all the time? So they tried to keep their spirits lifted. Mm -hmm. <laughs> no pun intended. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, see what I did there. <laughs> You're in the darkest place. And we're going to lift your spirits by using the basement. <laughs> <laughs> we'll just you know ignore the fact that your friend like left here all night. <laughs> <and he> didn't <laughs> come back. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I'm curious between the two of you, though, as well as is there a location like you've seen on TV and are like, nope, no way I'm stepping foot at that place? Hmm. There's, there's one place, and I'm not like completely nixing off the list um i'll just say that there, there's some hesitation about it is probably bobby mackey's um, oh yeah oh yeah here in nashville well i think it's uh, or, bobby mackey's it? no it's no, not in nashville oh it's mm -mm. nashville no mm -mm. Mm -mm. where's that mm -mm. i've heard uh, of it gosh if i try to remember um i can look it up real quick <laughs> Because I thought that it was they closed it down for a, a little while. They did, they okay. did, but I think it it's reopened. Okay. Um. It is. What does that say? Wow. Watch, we're about to get schooled by the newbie. Oh no! <laughs> I know it's. I know it's. Uh. Yeah. I know it's. Oh wow. Google Maps. Oh, yeah. It's all the way up in Cincinnati, near Cincinnati, Ohio. Oh, gosh. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I was way off. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. But there's been, there's been, you know, pretty like negative um, 
you know, presence that's been right. well known in that building, well documented, but, uh, you know, like I said, it's not off the radar. It would just be, there's a, there's a hesitation. So, yeah. you know, I would have to really like think about it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> if I'm willing to, uh, subject myself to, <laughs> Yeah, and if it's yeah. like if it's like that, yeah. I would I wouldn't feel comfortable going until I get a lot more experience under my belt. Right. So yeah. 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 Wholeheartedly. Yeah. It's uh it's it's not a, a pleasant place. So we'll just that's what's known. Now yeah. is that just what's known or is that the truth? I can't say. Right. That, that's the problem, is some places will hype up and you're like Oh, well, glad I came, but didn't have that experience. Thank God. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. And you never know, like, you know, Ben with like investigating with different teams of people that sometimes that like you can investigate the same place and the energy is completely different. (laughs) What did that say? (laughs) I couldn't. Oh, he can't get anyone to here in Northeast Florida to uh, do field research. Like no one's researching the woo factor. Huh. Uh, I'm sh- Northeast, I know of a few uh, hot spots over there. So you should easily be able to get someone in Northeast Florida because that's like St. Augustine's considered, I believe, in the north. Oh, that that is it. Central uh, to northeast, yeah, with Cape Canaveral and all of that. <laughs> yeah, I know that. Um, that's another bucket list place, obviously, because of the lighthouse there. Yeah, I didn't do the lighthouse, but I did the fort, and mm-hmm. I will say I shocked my friend. And a lot of people that watch the footage because they fired the cannon, right? And so in the camera footage, it's hilarious because I'm watching and you can see everybody moving on the top and getting ready to fire. And all of a sudden they fire and you see people jumping on the screen and they're like, you didn't move. I'm like, no, I didn't move. And they're like, how did you not move? I'm like, I don't know. I was just, I guess I was so focused on the camera that the sound of what just happened just went over my head. But I was like, <laughs> yeah. Fixated. I had a friend <laughs> watching the fire a blunder bus and never jumped. It's like, man, they're like, you got nerves. You're good at the camera. I'm like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> But being around Nashville, I'm curious, have you guys ever investigated the Parthenon building? No, and I don't think that is some place that would be open for investigations. Yeah, that's... Right, because they have the museum. Yeah, yeah, they put that thing inside. It's on lockdown um, when it's not open for visiting the museum and doing the whole tour and everything. Um. I'm yeah, just wondering I, if that's ever on anyone's list because being the Parthenon, I would imagine that being replica and mm-hmm. energy would be coming for that. But have anyone ever really thought of, hey, there's a spot we could go investigate? Yeah, well, even I mean, even just the history of the of the land that the Parthenon's built on. I mean, that's where like the old world trades fairs and everything used to happen, and you know. Um, gosh, who knows? They get some like residual stuff. Yeah. Yep. So, but yeah, I've never heard of that as even being an option. It would be cool, you know, if you're able to get in and do it, you know. Um, but not, yeah. not that I've It'd be interesting of. if we went like and talked to people during like the museum that, that actually worked there. Mm-hmm. See if yeah. they've had any experiences. Yeah. And then be like, Oh, is there any possibility yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we could get in there? Yeah, um, that'd be cool. 
I yeah. wonder, you know, I'm curious, is Nashville open to that? To like the paranormal stuff that's going on? Or are they like, nope, we don't want to talk about that. We're putting that under the rug. No, well, I mean, I think if you're if you're wanting to uh, investigate churches, then <laughs> then they, <laughs> they they might be like, yeah, no, no not, not happening, not yeah. happening. But like, there's a lot of locations within Nashville and kind of the surrounding, surrounding areas. areas that are within close to Nashville that um, do let you go in and investigate. Um, down in Franklin, Tennessee, which is not too far from Nashville, really yeah. like about a half hour outside mm -hmm. of down south of Nashville. They have the Lotes House, which was is pretty well known in the area to be haunted. Um, it, it definitely it was in the middle of a Civil War battle that had the wow. Battle of Franklin that happened there. Um, so um, I've been at that house and uh, I, I just did there like their uh, ghost tour, but or of the house and everything. Um, but you know, there was definitely some some energy and some spots that felt weird, and I was like, okay, I need to get back here and investigate. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> we yeah, know somebody who knows somebody that works there. So hey, <laughs> <laughs> we might have to hit up a friend, <laughs> phone a friend. You know, we <laughs> laugh, but the paranormal is a community of. It all depends on who you know. No. Mm -hmm. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So have so you haven't investigated Franklin at all? I haven't been down to investigate Franklin. No. I've been there just like on a, a red tour, but not a investigation. So I would um, imagine the activity there would be off the chart because if memory serves me right from my history degree, Franklin is where they tunneled and detonated underneath them. So they didn't even know it was coming. Yeah. So yeah. The case. That, that would be interesting to talk to somebody and being like, yeah, I was chatting with my friend. And next thing I know, I'm no longer talking to my friend. <laughs> Right. It, uh, don't know what happened. <laughs> yeah, this is true. It's uh I mean that that period of time was pretty bloody and mm -hmm. um, destructive. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I know right across the street from like like what currently sits the Lotes house across the street from it is a humongous like empty field and that that's literally where the battle took place there. Mm -hmm. So it's like and and we know that at the house they were the family that was living there was uh kind of hiding out from they just didn't want to be involved so um but you know yeah, and the, their house the was stories. right in the middle and you have no choice <laughs> yeah that, that's the thing people don't think about is you know with the war is you know when the battle comes to your front yard you don't have a choice anymore. And that's why, you know, we say, oh, how brave this person was that they stayed in their house during the battle and unfortunately was shot by a stray bullet. It's like, I don't think they were brave. I think it was, there was no time yeah. to get out. It's, you know, the second one army appears on your doorstep, the other one is right behind Mm -hmm. Yeah. And they tried hiding. I know uh, that sort of the tour talked about like the family tried to hide in the basement and, you know, they were found pretty yeah. quickly. But mm -hmm. the beginning of the war, that would be really interesting. The side center in the beginning of the war to investigate because you had the civilians riding up in carriages with picnics and going, Oh, we're gonna do the social event of the day is we're going to the battle. And it's like really? That that was the social event of the day? You guys purposely put yourselves in harm's way just to say I was of society. <laughs> yeah. It was such a weird time back then. Yeah, I can't even imagine, right? Yeah. 
No. Yeah. Today we're like, oh, there's a battle going on over there. I'll be like 200 yards at least over this way. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, for sure. <laughs> Nowhere to be found. I'd be gone. <laughs> yeah. I'm out. <laughs> so I, I'm going to kind of pivot the show a little bit here because sure. Rachel, you brought up something that I think and I'm not sure you probably ever talked about on an interview. What's that? So being on investigations or around, have you ever encountered the UFO and seen them? Um, not on, on an investigation. Well, maybe the closest thing, and it really wasn't like a UFO, um, but there was some, uh, I, unknown like lights that showed up in the picture um of uh when i was up at octagon hall mm -hmm. um that property is another one that was that's in franklin tennessee and um they were in the midst of, of the civil war but not only that there's been so much on the land there's been uh light seen in the sky there's been cryptids seen on the property um there's been apparitions seen in the house it um, so they pretty much talk about that there's a portal on the property and basically every, uh, probably every well-known team that's on television has been and investigated there. Mm -hmm. Um, but I was taking pictures of the field that supposedly a portal exists. Um, and I, and I got some interesting, you know, weird sort of, uh, just light anomaly um that was out in that field and in, in several different pictures and it looks different than anything i think i've ever seen but yeah. uh in my house like in my house when we were just like out in the backyard and, I, and i've got film i've got footage of it where there was some weird um light in the sky and when we i zoomed in on it it just it is it's strange it looks like it, it looks like an orb almost like how you would think like an, a ghost orb of light would look like. Um, but it's, it's up like, you know, hundreds, if not thousands of feet up in the sky. And, uh, it's just trippy. It moved really fast, um, faster than I've seen anything move. Mm -hmm. Um, and my husband and my brother-in-law and we all saw it and we all took, we had, have it on multiple cameras um so that was that was definitely weird mm -hmm. i would say it was definitely un unidentified didn't have any means of like propulsion to it there was no uh you couldn't see like wings on it it just looked like a ball of light in the sky moving really fast um you know i've read of clams where that's you know, one of the crafts that is seen where people are like, yeah, it doesn't have the, like, the characteristics and it's quiet, so. Yeah, we heard nothing. We didn't hear, because we have planes that fly all the time. We're, we're, we're not that far from the Nashville uh, airport, so the main BNA is like, it's, it's not far at all. It's about less than, I mean, about 15, 20 minutes for us to drive there, so. Um, we get planes out all the time and they're, and they're loud and they will, you know, you can definitely tell <laughs> it's a plane. And it's usually if it's coming in or leaving um, BNA, it's, it's, uh, it's low um, and you're going to see it and you're going to see the wings. You're going to see everything mm -hmm. that is a plane. So this yeah. was definitely, this was definitely odd. So Jen, are you into the whole ufology portal all of that too or are you still undecided <laughs> no 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 i i i mean i think that the i mean gosh the universe everything's too big for it just to be us i mean you know i definitely think that there's other things out there that we just don't know yet how could there not be you know yeah so i mean it that that's like one of my favorite lines from the movie contact is if we are alone in the universe, that's an awful lot of wasted space out there. <laughs> that's true. It's so that's true. Cool. I mean, if it's yeah. like infinite, come on. Yeah. Yeah. 
But uh, so I'm kind of curious too, is you know, talking about the cryptids, and I know we're at an hour, so do you guys have time to talk a little bit more, or do you gotta get going? No, I've got, I mean, I got time, it's okay. Yeah, I'm yeah. good too. Yeah, that's Rachel checks her watch again. I'm just double checking. Yeah. Like, yeah, yeah, I'm good. I'm good. <laughs> now, cryptids is not something I'm too cryptids familiar. Cryptids like with. is like big like Mothman and stuff like yeah, that. Okay, exactly. okay, Bigfoot stuff like that. Yeah. Okay. okay. Bigfoot, yeah, so. Mothman. Okay. Uh, the rake. <laughs> okay. Okay. The yeah. Slenderman. There's a lot of them. <laughs> There's okay. a lot of them, and I know too many, so that's just gives away my nerd nerdy. <laughs> so that's why I'm directing this question more to you, Rachel. Is with the cryptids, which one is the one you would most like to meet, and the one that you truly hope you never meet? Oh my gosh, that that's a tough one. Uh. I mean, I'm from originally from Northern California, so um, I I'd love to see a Sasquatch, <laughs> a Bigfoot, a Sasquatch. Um, I, yeah, I would love to see one of those. I I hope I never meet like maybe maybe the break is is like one of those scarier. Yeah, you showed me pictures of that. He was yeah. creepy. Yeah. That's wow, so I was totally expecting Dog Man to come from you, Rachel. <laughs> Why? Because <laughs> well, because the stories are always like you know, I've heard like if you encounter the Dog Man, your days are numbered. That oh, he, well, that, uh, I don't want to see that then. <laughs> <laughs> and they're like you know, and that the Dog Man will attack humans. Hmm. It's like one of the rare cryptids that i've read that are like yeah if you encounter this no <laughs> it's good i don't luck. know that much about dog man so <laughs> yeah, i've never heard of dog man yeah i i did a video trying to figure out how to either avoid or come in contact with dog man and all the evidence that I was reviewing, because there's actually websites where people turn in their evidence and it's logged and it's everything based on where you are in the world. And I was like, yeah, not only is this creature everywhere, but he comes out in the summer. He comes out in the winter. He comes out in the daytime, nighttime. Mm. I was like, there is zero way to predict a dog man. Hmm. I'll have to do a little bit of research on that. I've never heard of that before. Now I'm curious. Yeah, I I had a, I was doing an interview on a friend show in the UK, and somebody goes, "Oh, this legend is you know this cryptid's in your backyard. You know, have you experienced one?" And I'm like, "What cryptid?" And they go, "Dog man." I was like, "The heck Ooh. is a dog man?" <laughs> I was like, "I gotta is go it, do some is research." It like wolf man, huh? Yeah. It's supposed to be like a dog that's on two legs and walks, actually like will humanoid. chase cars. And he's like, there's like no fear of human contact with this creature. Hmm. And he will chase you if you get into his territory. Wow. Okay. Now, crazy. like we were saying earlier, Rachel and I were saying these are the claims. We mm -hmm. don't know this for a fact, so don't quote us. Yeah, exactly. But at the same time, I would not recommend going up to a dog man to pet him and be like, good boy. <laughs> if you want to still have an arm. Uh. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. We'll, we'll be looking for like cat woman or something. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know, we have Mothman. <laughs> yeah. Why not? Yep. So, like, what what cryptid was it that you heard about that you were like, "Ooh, I want to study more about these." I think, like, um, I find that that Skinwalker is pretty 
fascinating, I think, because of the Native American legends of the Skinwalker. Um, and I think that, you know, supposedly it was like one tribe, you know, conjured it up to, you know, get rid of another tribe. Um, right. But, you know, there's the whole Skinwalker Ranch and everything that's been there. I wholeheartedly believe that's a portal. Um, and perhaps like maybe the Skinwalker is something like Predator and come, him <laughs> is comes out of a portal. <laughs> yeah. That's my own theory. Yeah. <laughs> No, you know, I, I have a similar theory when it comes to like Bigfoot because I think he's interdimensional creature. Exactly, well. because all the photos are blurry. And why would they be blurry? Is because he's from one portal to another portal. He's phased out a little bit. So that's why it's blurry, in my opinion. Right. Do you ever watch that show uh Expedition Bigfoot? I haven't seen that one yet. There's a you should you should check it out. Um, they're about to come back. I think their new season started last night, but they've they travel to like I guess it's a they rely on a computer. Um, they'll plug in like where people have had sightings, and then they'll go to a hot spot and they'll investigate for like the whole season. They'll spend in that one spot really? trying to see what they can get. And and I know that they caught like there was a shadow of like behind them that looked like a man like it was the shadow of a man walking behind them but it like was walking and then it just disappeared like the shadow just disappeared and it was like but it wasn't like a normal man like it looked it like the shadow was like ape like like a very tall walking ape. Oh, I'm definitely that's checking this out. Yeah, you got to yeah. check it out. It's it's really cool. It's, that's it's, cool. They've gotten some amazing stuff. Um and now I think mm. this season they're supposed to be in Northern California. So I'm like, yes, I've got to watch this. <laughs> yeah, I, I hesitate <laughs> on homeland. watching some <laughs> of the Bigfoot shows because a lot of them are like, yeah, so this is where it was claimed to have happened. And so that they're just sitting in the woods. And it's like, this is an hour of my life. I'm not going to get back <laughs> because why am I sitting here watching you just sitting in the woods? And doing the occasional famous ghost TV show thing of, did you hear that? <laughs> yeah. Like, I mean, some of it, you know? I mean, they have like uh, Dr. Um, Maria Mayor, I think is her name. She is a, one of the top uh, primate, primatologists. Um, <laughs> hey, yeah. <laughs> there we got everyone nice. coming in the woodworks now. <laughs> it's that time, huh? <laughs> <laughs> no, I but, heard you were talking about Bigfoot. They had to get in on it. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah, comes a running when you mention the Bigfoot. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I'm like Jen. We got to do like a let's go on a Sasquatch hunt. <laughs> Very exciting. Be fun. I want to do that, and I want to get with Mufon and do a and do a UFO investigation. Hey, that'd be I'm, like I said. Yeah, I'm down. Let's go. I know a couple <laughs> of places. If you want to really get some cool UFO stuff, I, I haven't been myself, but I know I've been watching videos from there, and like, man. It is like super active over there. And so it's like, I've been invited, but I just haven't had the time to be like, okay, yes, I'm coming up for the weekend. Mm -hmm. Let's mm -hmm. do this. <laughs> I know that's our challenge because, you know, we work at the same place. So our boss is not going to be like, I know. Yeah, you both can go. Yeah, He'll be like, go. no, take, take, take the week. It's okay. We got this. We'll have, we'll, we'll have nobody. <laughs> I'll be like, I can see Rachel going. Jen, this is how we're going to do it. I'm going to take <laughs> Friday off. I'll meet you there Saturday. You come Saturday. We'll come back Sunday. Nobody will ever know we were missing. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I don't know about so that. We're like, the bosses <laughs> can't say anything. The doctor's like, what the hell? I know. I know. Oh, man. I think uh, World War Three would break out in the office. <laughs> Yeah, we'd come Literally. back in the building, be on fire. Fire, yeah. <laughs> yep. Yep. We'd see the smoke 
we, uh, we're pulling in. We're, we're a couple of those who, who kind of like are the glue that mm -hmm. helps keep the place together. Yeah. And yes, oh, yeah, well. we'll pat, pat myself on the back. <laughs> there you go, Jen. <laughs> <laughs> Made it through a day, so. Oh, man. <laughs> yeah. You, you got to keep See, the that's why we'd rather around. talk to ghosts than, than actual live humans. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, There's less drama. <laughs> yes, I, I, I'm totally picturing you both being in the office, and when you get the one patient who just doesn't want to stop sharing a story or something, and you're like, look at each other and go, "So, you're wanting to go check out that zombie house this weekend, <laughs> right?" <laughs> and watch the person be like, "Uh, I'm out." <laughs> <laughs> Hey, that's what we should do next time. I know, can... give it a try, see how it goes. Because yeah. we're being down like, in the we're south, going to that murder uh, house, right? <laughs> yeah, we're going to that demon house, right? <laughs> <laughs> see how quickly. <laughs> oh man! <laughs> no, but yeah. we yeah, have so... fun. Oh, definitely, you gotta have fun. Oh yeah, yeah. I think that that is one of the things that I've talked about with multiple people is like, yes, we are, you know, we get passionate and we get like, mm -hmm. you know, really into ghost hunting and using our equipment and trying to, to get that evidence. But we also, you know, are about just like having fun while we do it. Yeah, it's always a good time. Mm -hmm. It is. And that's how we're like, you know, when we are brushing. It was like, whoa like seven hours went by like Blue that we're like we didn't even get to investigate like yeah as many as many of the spots as we wanted to because mm -hmm. same know. thing with when we were in lynchburg that yeah just flew by yeah flew by yeah, yeah. and again because i think we just had such a good group that mm -hmm. we were with and it made it like what it was yep yeah so I'm curious between the two of you, there, there seems to be a lot of theories going around about the active time where everything seems to be more active. And once you pass that point, it's like you can pretty much go. Spirits are done. <laughs> what, what's your opinion on it? Yeah. Yeah. So I'm curious your opinion on that and when you think that is, like your theory of from your experiences, what is the really active time to, yeah, you're done. They're pretty much done. <laughs> I don't like I think I, it's on the, like you said, the location, location. I think. Yeah. I think it's location specific more than it is like strictly to, day. you know, yeah. between this time and this time. Um, Cause we know like when we were down in Lynchburg, you know, at the jail, they're like, oh, yeah, everything shuts down. It seems like it's quiet between, you know, nothing past like midnight or midnight. something, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it's like early there, but then we went across the street and to mm -hmm. the funeral home and it was like, hey, Super. it was still active. It was like very active. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. I think that it, that, I kind of like test that theory. I think I think it's more location than it is time. Mm -hmm. yeah, I kind of noticed that. Uh, I think for me, between like twelve and two or three, that's when things are like, "Hey, you know, you're up. I'm up. Let's chat." <laughs> or walking around, and after that, they're like, "Eh, I've done my bid. I'm done. <laughs> I'm good." <laughs> yeah. Isn't that yeah. like 12 to 3 a.m. is somewhere like the witching hour? <laughs> yeah, there is talks of that too, yeah. And there's also talks of that's the time when the veil is really thin too. Thin. Mm -hmm. Oh, we're starting to approach that time where mm -hmm. the season where the veil starts to thin. Thinning, yep. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Halloween. Yes. All, All Halloween. Hallows. Yep, exactly. Yep. <laughs> And I, I was noticing this, how funny it is that we have All Hallows Eve, which became Halloween. And then the next day, 
is All Saints Day. Mm-hmm. And then the day after that is the Day, day of the Dead. dead. Yep. And so it's like, yeah, we, we pretty much have established this is a season of spooky. Yep, yep, yep. <laughs> and yep. death. <laughs> yep. It's kind of like, yeah, it's definitely where everything becomes like we're after because we're going towards the dark instead yeah. of the light. So. Yeah. So um, real quick, I'm kind of curious, Rachel, do you consider using your abilities as gifts and or is that something you always had or did you like learn with teams how to do that? Yeah, I think that um, I think as I've been invest actually investigating, I feel like I'm becoming more in tune with it than than I was before. Um, you know, and I don't know if that's because it's like okay, now I'm really practicing much more in using like the gift um, because I'm trying to like communicate more with with spirits. So, um, yeah, I'm definitely, I think I notice it more. I don't think it, I, I don't think I realized when I was young that that's really what was happening. Right. Mm-hmm. I just was like, okay, I had this strange experience, but I think as I've been an adult, that's been where I've, I've learned much more. Mm-hmm. And I mm-hmm. mean, I think that, I think that just goes, uh, what I feel like I, as a gotten older that that just comes with age like I know myself better than I ever have you know I like like honestly can say my 40s have been like the best years because I feel like I'm more myself and I'm more confident and so I think like that's as a gone like when I went in my 20s they were like oh yeah your 30s will be great it'll be the best years and then your 30s they're like your 40s will be wonderful so (laughs) Now I'm looking. Now I'm looking forward to the fifties. <laughs> um, yeah, and don't they say oh, like forties is the new twenty? So it's like we're yeah. starting over. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. <Yep. laughs> yep, we've talked about like I know my husband and I have talked about like looking at pictures from when even when my parents were our ages, and it seemed like they look like much older, older. than than we do at their same yeah. age i don't know yeah. if that's true or not but you know i take it yeah, I know. yeah. That's a, i'm not hey i'm happy I'm not, to I'm say like, like i'm like i'm happy to say yeah people are always surprised when we tell oh, them how old we is. are and how old our kids are and they're just like no way <laughs> <laughs> i know they're like so, what? yeah they're floored <laughs> so i'll take it i'll take it day yeah. in and day out <laughs> yeah. exactly so, Jen, I'm curious, you know, as you're seeing all of this and the paranormal and getting more familiar with everything, is there a gift or ability that you've seen and you're like, oh, I totally wish I could do that? Oh, um, you wish it could be like Justin. <laughs> I don't know. Or you're like, no. <laughs> Yeah, I think that I'd be I'm I think I'm too emotional <laughs> to 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 do that. Um not not that I've seen yet. Um not going to say never. Um but I think, you know, it takes uh, a lot of you know, you've really got to be able to hone in, you know, your, your emotions, you know, when, when you're investigating and and trying to connect and, you know, I, uh, I think it would be cool, you know, to be able to communicate the way like, you know, Justin does and, um, you know, or maybe be a sensitive and kind of have a, a sense of what happened, you know, in the area, you know, be able to feel, you know, feel things. But I think that if that were to happen to me right now, I'd probably be scared out of my mind. <laughs> well, you know, I, I'm uh, just going to ask because I feel like I'm missing out a huge thing of this conversation is who is Justin? What does he do? <laughs> oh, 
Oh, we love Justin. Um, <laughs> he's one of my favorite people in the world. Um, Justin is very, very uh, gifted. Um, he's he, another paranormal investigator. He's another investigator. Yes. Um, and he just has this ability to connect with spirits and energies and, um, you know, even can do that. I think since he was real young. He was yeah. Young. Yeah. Yeah. And just watching him. Cause you know, we, we've gone on a couple of investigations with them and um, just watching him in action. It just blows my mind. It just absolutely blows my mind. And um, to be able to do that, I don't know if that's something I would ever want to be able to do. I don't know if I could truly handle it personally, you know? Yeah. I remember when we were at uh, old stone jail and yeah. And Justin was like, brought me over to one of the cells and he was like, do you, what do you see in here? And I was like, there's, there's a shadow, like, crouch down in the bottom of the cell and we're like hey jen come look at this you're like nope, nope. i'm good <laughs> nope, 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 nope. <laughs> so, yeah. i don't need to see oh. it i'm good <laughs> i'm good i'm good i'm yeah. good right here <laughs> the funny reason why i asked that jen is there's been this growing feeling in the community and i don't know if it's the same where you guys are is everybody has abilities mm -hmm. it's just being tuned in and using so that's why i was like curious with you being brand new to it if you were like oh you know being able to see would be so cool or hear you know it'd be really great and being like okay yeah because I mean, I'm sure if you picked one, I'm sure you have many, and I'm sure Rachel has many, but you really utilize the one that draws to you, and mm -hmm. Rachel probably could help you out if you were like, yeah, you know, I want to, if you wanted to be like Justin or be, you know, whichever way you wanted to go, I'm sure Rachel would be like, yeah, you know, this is how you do it and kind of help oh, you yeah. in the investigations to Yeah, if if and when that it. time ever comes and I feel like I want to learn more about, you know, becoming in tune with with myself and, you know, um, I guess my sensitivities, I know I've got Rachel. Rachel's got my back. I know she'll do whatever she needs to to help me feel supported and, and grow and, and learn and, you know, even other people that I've interacted with the community, you know, I mean, they've, they've kind of welcomed me with open arms and teaching me and showing me the ropes. And, you know, I know if that were something I would ever want to pursue and, and that'll probably come with time, you know, like I'm still, there's still a lot to learn. I'm still figuring things out. Um, oh, yeah. yeah. You don't need to rush it. I was a just lifetime curious. figuring it out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You know, I think that it, I just kind of want to let that happen naturally and see where, you know, my strengths might be, you know, in that particular area myself, you know, after getting more comfortable, you know, in this role and, and, and doing these things. So and, and this is a fun fact for paranormal investigators. It does get super weird and creepy when you first start. That's totally normal. <laughs> yeah. I've already had a couple of creepy experiences, <laughs> so. Uh, it's like, yeah, don't don't be like sitting there going, oh, I don't want the guests because, you know, it's going to be creepy. I'm like, oh, no, it's going to be creepy at first. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There, there's the learning curve. Absolutely. We've all done it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I think you're already on the first steps of doing it by just having that open mind. Yeah. Yeah. And wanting and wanting to mm -hmm. like, have those experiences because they were yeah. like, you know, when you had like that, the the glass having one, it was like, oh my god, is it is like really Ooh. happening? But then you were I was like, almost in denial, and you were I'm like, just like, I'm this, hooked. That's why I didn't <laughs> say anything, that. I just sat there, I was like, no, frozen, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, yeah. Yeah, All right. Well, it has time. been an absolute pleasure having you both on. 
Thank you. And so it's been been fun. Thank you so much for having us. Yes. And I'm so grateful you were able to come on, Jen. Oh, yeah. Thank you. I couldn't. We were looking for I was looking forward to it. Yeah. Yeah. Some people are a little nervous right out the shoot going out and being like on a show going, yes, I do this (laughs) now. (laughs) So I'm glad I'm glad you are out and putting yourself out there like that. Yeah, of course. Like I said, got my got my support, my my support system. So (laughs) we're we're good. I'm good. But thank you. Yeah, thank you so much for having me. Yeah, yeah thank you for pleasure. having me as well. It's been so fun. It has. I'm finally and getting the opportunity to talk to you because yeah. I know it's been a long time coming. <laughs> it has. And I even remember at first, you're like we said in the beginning, you were like, why do you want me on your show? I'm not anything. <laughs> and I was like, trust me. There, there's reasons. <laughs> trust the process. <laughs> Yeah. But yeah, so where can people find Sinister Sisters Paranormal Investigations? Yep. You can find us. Um, we're on Instagram, Facebook, um, under uh, Sinister Sisters Paranormal, um, both. And then we have our website that is um, the same Sinister Sisters Paranormal.com. They can find us and and we've got some in, upcoming investigations like if they're around the nashville area and want to join um you know we're, we're we've got you know tickets out there um we'll be at um old south pittsburgh hospital on august 31st and then um old stone jail in franklin kentucky on september 28th, 28th. Mm-hmm. and then we're working on uh, a day of the dead event as well so oh that sounds fun mm-hmm. yeah 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 well very cool and i gotta say to everyone watching go check out their stuff because it's really cool and rachel comes from a really cool background so definitely the two of you i feel like you're going to be going places Oh, we appreciate that. Thank you. (laughs) So, so glad I I can say I was one of the first to promote this team. (laughs) Yes. Yes, you were. We appreciate your support. Thank you so much. Yeah, we so do. You're welcome. We'll have to come back and share some some more, some evidence. Yes, definitely. I would love to have you guys back on. Okay. We love that. So now comes the fun part of the show where I make everyone just have to think just a little bit. So between the two of you, you can both answer, or if one of you wants to answer, that's fine. From your experiences in life, what is a golden nugget you would like to leave the audience with? Oh, man. That is a tough one. I feel like this is the moment I need to get the Jeopardy music going. I know. <laughs> <laughs> that would be difficult. Um, doesn't have to be deep or very introspective. Just okay. Just be, ki- just be kind. You never yeah. know what somebody's going through. And your random act of kindness, you know, could potentially have the ability to change somebody's life. Just be kind. Yeah. Yeah. That, I would Rachel. agree with that. Yeah. <laughs> I think <Top> yeah. <laughs> Rachel. <laughs> don't know. Don't know if I can. <laughs> yeah, I know. I'm like, man, coming from I don't know to laying that one out, it's like psh, the bar went from really low like, to okay, like I can ceiling. keep it simple. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, no, I would yeah, say that I, totally that agree. I agree with that wholeheartedly. You know, it doesn't take much, but it can mm-hmm. really impact somebody greatly because you don't yeah. know. You can't walk uh-huh. in somebody else's shoes. So, yeah. You know. yeah. If you can, be very careful. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> they might be shoes might be too tight <laughs> or they might be too big <laughs> or you might be stepping in a puddle that you don't want to step into that's right that's right <laughs> absolutely well thank you again and thank you to the audience and thank you to everyone in the chat room so wherever you are in the world make it a great one whether it's good morning for you or afternoon evening or if you're asleep don't worry about it you can always catch the replay <laughs> but wherever you are in the world make it a blessed loving day and share the love and like jen and rachel said be kind spread a little kindness in the world we could totally use that Okay. And with Absolutely. that, I am going to say, well, I was going to say au revoir, but then I was like, yeah, I don't want to start people thinking I speak French and <laughs> read all kinds of French <laughs> comments and be like, I have no idea what you're saying. <laughs> <laughs> so with that, I'm going to say good night, everyone. Good night. Bye. Good night. Bye. Bye.